I've got six objects here, object A, B, C, D, E, and F. And the first object is a one dimensional object. And you need to balance this object such that it does not rotate. So there must be one point where you can put your stand, your triangular stand, and then the object get balanced. The stand will be somewhere in the middle, right there. Now the question is, how far should it be from either side? You have to choose a point anywhere in the object that you choose it as a reference point, meaning where you're going to measure your lens from. It's easier to, make, to, to take the far left as your reference point so that all the length measurements can be positive. The point in the Cartesian plane zero, zero, but the balance point of this object will be at point two, zero. You put a triangular stand right there on this object A will be uh, in what we refer to as rotational equilibrium. Let's look at the second object, object B. Which point can you basically just pinch it so that it doesn't end up rotating? You know that it will have to be at the center as well, which is referred to as centroid. A centroid simply means the geometric center. Geometry means shape. So the geometric center of an object. So the center of mass of this object is at the geometric center. If again, we choose the bottom left corner as our reference point, point zero zero, and the center of mass or the centroid in this case will be at point Shout it out if you know. Anyone? Just unmute yourself. It's point one and uh, one, one and one. Okay, so it will be one along the X and then one in the Y. Object C is four meters wide and the height is two meters. Again, we're looking for the centroid because that's the balance point. I forgot to mention that, assuming that all of it is made of the same material, same density, then the center of mass will be at its centroid. So what is the centroid of object C? Anyone? Two and one. Two and one. Two and one. So it will be two along the X, and then one along the height. So the mass of that object is acting at that particular point. It is for the same reason that when you draw vector diagrams, I always say you start with a point, you draw your Cartesian plane and so forth. So this is something that's not new. You've been using it, but it's just that we're giving it a name. Let me also then introduce the center of gravity. What is the center of gravity? What is gravity? Gravitational pull is basically the weight, okay? But we do know that weight or the gravitational pull or force of gravity is actually given by G M1, M2 over R squared. Are you familiar with this equation? Anyone? Yes, yes sir. So this object could be M2, right? But this is the F. G is that constant. And then R, what is R? Who can tell me what R is? The distance, the radius. The distance from where to where? From mass one to the second mass. There we go, from the center of the first mass to the center of the second mass, okay? Which means when you change the distance from here to there, are you changing R or not? So I'm gonna call this position X and I'm gonna call this position Y, I'm gonna call that Z. Would you say the value of R would be the same for those three points, X, Y, Z? Yes, 
Why? Because I mean, you said that uh, you said no. that the distance r is from the center yeah. of the, the so it should be changing, right? Okay. But because the radius of f is so big compared to the objects that we normally study, then the difference in g value will basically be so small that so when you hear somebody saying center of mass of this object, center of gravity of this object, in most cases, those two things will be the same. Now we go to the other object, which is object D. We've chosen the reference point to be outside. You can choose it to be right there, the center, doesn't matter. I just want it to be you know, uniform in my approach. So I've chosen the far left. Uh, to be the reference point. So it will be one meters from there to there. Find the centroid of a triangle. What you normally do is you go to the vertex or to the one corner, and then you join it to the middle or the center of the opposite side. So the distance from the vertex or from one corner to the middle of the diagram will be two thirds of that line that joins that vertex to the middle of the opposite side. That will happen for all three sides where the longer distance will be from the vertex to the center. An equilateral triangle is actually, if you cut it in half, it's more like it's made of two right angled triangle. If we choose the bottom left corner as our reference point, meaning point zero, zero. If you were to take this half, and then you compare it with this half, they are the same. That's why we said that the center, does it make sense? And then going up, is it still going to be at the center? And says, no, it won't be at the center, okay? Because if you look at this half, of the triangle and you compare it with the upper half. They're not the same, isn't it? So you cannot expect mm -hmm. them to be balanced in the middle. So it would be one third of the height of the triangle. What's the X, Y coordinates of the centroid of object F? 1.5? There we go. And then what about the Y component? One Sorry. third of six. One oh. third of six. <laughs> Remember, it's not that the oh. center going up. So that will be two. Does it make sense? Yes. Beautiful. Sometimes you get a shape that's not basic shapes. And then you are asked to find the balance point or the centroid of this object. So how do you do that? Yes, you've got to assume that if you are not given that the object is made of uniform mass distribution, meaning its density is the same everywhere. So the X component of the center of gravity will be given by the X component of the first object multiplied by its mass or its area in this case, Right, it's easier to calculate the area than to calculate the mass in this case. Plus the X component of the second shape multiplied by the area of the second shape, just like that. X component of the end piece multiplied by the area of the end piece. And then we divide that by the total area of the object. Okay, so you have to notice that this object is made of different basic shapes. You divide the object into the basic shapes and then you stick them into this equation. The Y will also be found in the same manner. The Y component will also be just the Y, the y value of the center of gravity of the first object multiplied by its area plus the Y value of the center of gravity of the second object multiplied by its area, just like that up to, or the Y coordinate of the center of gravity of the nth object 
multiply by the area of the nth object. Then you divide this by the total area. And here's another one. Here, this one is made of a triangle, a rectangle, and a cutout of a circle. So if it is a cutout, all you basically do, instead of saying plus x1, a1, you basically just use a negative. You just say minus because it's been cut out. Are we together? So I want to challenge you to, to solve what we refer to as the centroid of composite objects. Composite in a sense that it's composing of multiple sh basic shapes. Any questions on what you've just done today? Do you think you can manage this? Do you need any more clarity? Yes, we need more clarity. Okay. Let's look at this first one or the first object that is showing on the screen now. How many shapes do you see? Basic shapes. How many basic shapes do you see? Two, Two right? Two. Yes. So, so it, I ignore this cut out and I take the whole thing as one piece. So this will be my object A. Are we together thus far? Anyone yes, who does? we are together. There we go. So the center of gravity of this shape will be at two and the height will be 1.5. You make a table like this. The X component of the CG, the Y component of the CG and the area, all right? So for the rectangle, we said that it's going to be two and the Y will be? 1.5. The area will be 4 times 3, and what is it? 12. So you can substitute in those equations. So now we get to the circle. So I've just given you the hint here of saying you take this object as a composite of two basic shapes. The first one is a circle, and the second one is the a rectangle. And then you draw a table like the one I've just drawn there. The X component of the CG of the first shape, which can call object shape A, will be at 2 and 1.5. And for object B, you'll have to look it up and then you do the same. And then you also calculate its area. Then your object will actually be only two shapes. So your formula will actually end somewhere there. What you will have to do, because the second one is a cut out, it's not added. The equation basically will be negative for the second object too. If you understand what I mean, because you removed object two. Similarly with the y, instead of saying plus y2 a2, you will say minus y2 a2. The only thing at this stage that I'm leaving to you is, how do you find the centroid of a half a circle? That's all I'm gonna to leave to you now until we meet. Similarly, on this kind, how many shapes there do you see? Two of them. Two. No, no. Three. Three shapes. Yeah, there's three shapes. Yeah, three shapes. So this one, you can basically just cut it here, isn't it? Yes, you can. After you cut it here, now you've got a rectangle, you've got a triangle, and you've got a circle. All right, for the circle, because it's a cutout, you use minus. Or somebody might say, I like cutouts, I'm gonna take the whole thing as, as a rectangle. Somebody can do this as well. You see, this is a rectangle, all right? And then how many cutouts do you have then? Two, four. Um, now you now you have two cutouts. You see this now. So it's up to you. Play around with both methods and you'll see that you'll always get to the same answer.